Let the peace, love, and blessings of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Christ is always the same. Everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, Leader Olumba, Olumba, a Buddha, supernatural teacher. First lesson, John chapter 16, verse 14. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. Second lesson, Luke chapter 1, verse 33. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Golden text, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. Brethren, the words of God have come to fulfillment, and today you are all witnesses of the word of God that our Lord Jesus Christ is the same at all times. This is why he said that he is the life, the way, and the truth. If you find out that something is true and it remains true always, day in, day out, you can conclude that such a thing can never change. If you find out that anything is being talked of as being constant every day and all year, that thing is a living thing. If you follow a certain procedure and it has no implication, you should know that it is the correct system. This trait is confirmed in our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the living evidence we have in this world. He is the only competent being we have today and he is the only king who rules in heaven and on earth. There is no other king besides him. Whenever a human being is addressed as king, it is preposterous. And in any event, who made such a person a king? There is no other king who can rule mankind except our Lord Jesus Christ. None can rule over angels and at the same time rule over the fishes, the animals, except our Lord Jesus Christ. The only paramount ruler, therefore, is our Lord Jesus Christ because he rules over every creature and rules in heaven and on earth. Our assignment now is to reveal his glory and his reign, which had ever remained the same. His joy knows no bound and his mercy is forever. In the days gone by when the three wise men heard of his birth, they risked their lives and went on a perilous long journey to see him. But what have you done in appreciation for his being in your midst? If as uncivilized as the people of old were, the shepherds and angels rejoice over his birth, then what would the present age do? Our Lord Jesus Christ said that he would no longer drink of the cup except in his Father's kingdom. This is why our joy is now full and his love is also sufficient because the King of kings and Lord of lords has come to dwell among us. Now, when you look around, you will see that we are interested only in carnal things. Who has come out openly to rejoice in his birth. Our Lord Jesus Christ remains the same always and this is the reason we should not fix a day for worshipping and rejoicing in him. It was written that he shall rule over the house of Jacob forever and that his kingdom shall have no end. We should worship and rejoice in him from January to December. Let us think about this issue very seriously because God has time for everything under the earth. Christ is weak. Brethren, today the 19th of December and onwards are days that set aside to worship and reverence Him for coming to dwell among us. It is a period of remembrance. Do not reflect back and feel as though 
you could have done better than the people of those days. What of today? There is still the opportunity to do something to commemorate his coming down to earth. You have been testifying that you have seen Christ. This is the time to confirm such assertion in practice. The three wise men did not go to worship the Lord empty-handed. There was no invitation sent out to them because they knew that our Lord Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and for eternity. In those days, it was our Lord Jesus Christ alone who came down to earth, yet the people did, yet the people held him highly esteemed. What about now that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit have come down to dwell with men here on earth? Can you measure the amount of joy that should be expressed? Levi, while sitting amidst his wealth, saw our Lord Jesus Christ passing and the glory of God whirling around him. He forsook all the wealth and followed Christ. Matthew, a millionaire, on seeing the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ, left his wealth to become Christ's follower. Mary Magdalene, on hearing Christ's popularity, paid him homage by anointing his feet with a very expensive ointment and wiping them with her hair. You profess to have seen God and you have to prove this with some gifts indeed. I know that some only come in here to receive prayer, to be healed of their infirmities and to acquire wealth and ask for children. Suppose that you receive a letter informing you that our Lord Jesus Christ is descending from heaven or coming by air to Lagos. What will be your reaction? I know that you will rejoice exceedingly, yet you have to do what the three wise men did. The blind Bartimaeus, for instance, had to for forfeit his receptor to in which all the air, all the arms that he received are packed and went to our Lord Jesus Christ having heard of his name and his fame. Brethren, I am bringing good tidings of great joy to you today. This sort of news accompanied with gifts are such that when you receive them, you will lament no more neither will you weep again because the holy spirit has come to wipe away all tears from your eyes and to remove the power of death and haze away the reign of our lord jesus christ is not from any man he does not only come to rule over mankind but over the ocean over the moon the sun the stars the angels his reign has no beginning and no end. Seek no more for your self-glory or self-honor, for he who is worthy to reign is now on earth. Our Lord Jesus Christ revealed that the kingdom of God is like a precious stone. When discovered in a field by a man, he went and sold his possessions in order to acquire the field because of joy. This sort of inward joy is what most people possess, and this is the time to prove it. You cannot light a lamp and put it under a bushel. If you must take up a contract work, you have to practice the sort of work you are expected to handle before you embark upon it. So also it is with choir practice and other activities which is practiced behind closed doors it is time that when it is time that what was practiced to be displayed outside our lord jesus christ ruled over the fishes the animals and everything in the universe both in both visible and invisible this is why as many as come to him must rejoice and he has authorized them to become the sons of the Most High God. What is left to be done is to rejoice, for our Lord Jesus Christ is our King. 
It is foolish for native doctors to say that they do not know our Lord Jesus Christ. It is equally foolish for the government to disdainfully look at him. Who is therefore ruling the earth if not our Lord Jesus Christ? Even the paramount ruler has got nothing to be proud of. He should know that only Christ rules. Do not forget that all who rejoice in him will be given great honor. If you do not love our Lord Jesus Christ, there will be gnashing of teeth in due course. There is an acclamation for you that the kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of Jehovah God and his Christ. Why does the government under parastatus tells suffer? It is because the people do not rejoice in Christ and they refuse to acknowledge his kingship. It is our bounding duty to go and proclaim the good news. Whether you are a Christian or a Muslim or a Buddhist or a Hindu, there is nothing whatsoever under the heaven that does not belong to his dynasty. This is the main problem of the entire world because faith without work is dead. If you accept that you know him and fail to recognize his reign, you are failed. Brethren, I do not want to take you any further. Listen attentively to the golden text. Listen attentively to the first lesson. First lesson. John chapter 16 verse 14. He shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. Brethren, do not mind all those who go about shouting, Jesus, Jesus, for our assignment is to reveal him instead of shouting on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is our King and Lord of the universe. He has come. He is ruling heaven and earth. He rules with love. He uses truth to judge us and patience to live with us. The establishment of his rule is not from today. All the miracles and the works seen here on earth have been wrought by him. He died and resurrected so that he may unite the whole universe into one indivisible entity so that he may be the king of both the living and the dead. We do not teach you to extol any other name in this world except the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anybody refuses to call on him, he is the child of perdition spoken about and such a person is doomed. There is nothing that you cannot accomplish when you call on his name. Christ is known everywhere by all brethren. All the heavens know him. All the angels know knows him. All the animal world know him. The waters and every other thing know this great name. And there is no other name on earth or in heaven to be called upon. He is the Lord and King forever and ever. When you refuse his name, you refuse life and everything else. Because he is your King, he is your Lord and ruler of your own intestines. Do not mind those who say that they are not members of any church, for they are simpletons. Forget about the Muslims, forget about the Hindus, the Buddhists, for they shall know him. For it is stated that all knees shall bow to him. Your main duty now is to go and proclaim his glory, as at now, I am standing in an heavenly platform to proclaim this unto you. I assure you that if you rejoice in our Lord Jesus Christ, all the good things from heaven 
will follow you. The government of this world or any other government beyond is under his footstool. All elements and the elemental spirits are under his jurisdiction. There is no vacuum left behind that our Lord Jesus Christ do not occupy. Heaven rejoices. What about the earth? You often hear him say that if anybody refuses to if you often hear him say that if anybody refuses his rulership, he must surely die. This proves that whatever he opens, no power can close it. And whatever he closes, nothing can open it again. People give Satan glory by averring that he is powerful, yet only a few minor set of people are with him. Do you read in the revelation of John the Divine that only one small angel was sent to drag the dragon down from above into misery? If you do not know this great king, our Lord Jesus Christ, let me use this chance to reveal him to you. Accept him now and rejoice, for it is for this end that I come. That is to reveal his name here on earth. There is time for everything. When the Holy Spirit did not come, nothing could have happened from the start of this assembly to the end. And at every other time, I reveal our Lord Jesus Christ to you all. Is there anything that you can do from January to December than to extol his name? If you want to turn away, where can you go? The very bed that you lie on is Christ. The very air that you breathe is his. He owns the food that you eat. Money is his and every other thing, material and spiritual. To where do you go that he does not exist? If you fly in the air or go under the depth of the water or hide in the dark, he is there before you arrive. There is no alternative than to serve him. Let no one deceive you. There is no other thing that you can do and there is nowhere else you can go to. What happens in the fold of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star is that some have seen him and some have not seen him. But all those who have seen him have seen the light and are rejoicing. The other set of people who come in here with doubts and as a result they encounter a lot of difficulties. You must realize that his reign is wonderful. You do not need to request for anything. You have the Lord as your mediator and authority in everything. He has no deputy. His decision and words are final because there is no court of appeal. Though his judgment has not yet come. Read the second lesson again.